two billion polygons. Not true, not two billion. It's two billion and, and six hundred million. I'm pointing right here in the left corner, you can see it there. It's all happening in a real time ray tracer, key shot. And it's happening on an old PC. So Keyshot is your re real-time ray tracer. It's really utilizing your CPU at the most. It's not really dealing with any video cards or anything. You can see that I have a Intel Core i5. It's about four years old. I haven't upgraded my chip for about that time. Yeah, and it, it's handling this huge amount of GL. You can see that, it, well, the cheap set is heating up right here. You can see it's 65, 75 degrees. Uh, meanwhile, all my video cards are a pretty low temperature. Well, for example, I have three monitors. These two video cards, uh, this particular video card is supporting two monitors. And this one supports my main monitor. So it's fairly low on temperature. If I turn on, for example, Unreal Engine, it will shoot up, up to 80 degrees immediately. So you can see it's all utilizing just the CPU power and doing its you know, fantastic job at that. So you, you can see that frame rate, the frames per second here are pretty low. It's just like less than one frame per second. Uh, yeah, that's like, but you know, if you played Assassin's Creed, you're kind of used to that, right? It's no big deal. This frame is a bit, it's got a bit less No, it's just because I already had it running for 20 minutes. But with this much of polygons, I can still fly around, I can still navigate, move rocks around. It's not prohibiting my options. Of course, it's not fast. Yes, it's fairly slow. And moving stuff around is fairly slow. Though I did find that there is not much of a difference between half a billion, like 400 million polygons, and 2 billion polygons in performance. If you're talking about performance, it's pretty much the same. To get a nice render, you have to wait for a couple hours, so put it on a couple hour render. And yeah, it is not optimized, it's like opposite of optimization. I'm just trying to feed really huge rocks from ZBrush that's been decimated in ZBrush down to 500,000. And putting them in Keyshot and just trying to see when it starts to choke, but it doesn't start to choke. It's I can keep going, keep going, keep pushing more stuff there. It's just the issues I get is the file size gets bigger and bigger. File size right now is about one gigabyte, which is manageable. Keyshot does a really good job on compressing the file into a smaller chunk. And it doesn't take that much time to open the file. It probably takes about five minutes. Again, considering the scope of the scene, five minutes is nothing. Like, uh... I had architectural visualization projects where I would have to wait for 20 to 30 minutes to open a file which would be like 50 million polygons and all it's well obviously the shaders and textures but yeah so five minutes to open a huge scene is nothing here I don't really have any textures this all uh, all the shaders are procedural uh, it's all just gel you know, I'll I talk about this in my, if you, if you check my YouTube channel, you'll see the tutorials about how to sculpt the rocks, how to shade them, how essentially to set up the whole scene. Um, I'm talking over that, you know, in separate videos. And I want to say a few words about this whole thing, how did I come to it? Well, essentially, I've been sculpting some rocks and I had, uh, I used, as a reference, I used the photo pack from Photoref. And I decided that, well, there are quite a few rocks scattered around. Maybe I can do the same. I can scatter them, scatter them all around and see how it goes. And maybe do a paint over later on. Creating a, some kind of meta painting, which I plan to do later. And yeah, it works out quite fine. Uh, some, there are some limitations in Keyshot. It's not really built for environments. 
Like, I cannot really scatter the rocks around the hills. I cannot put them on mountains, um, depending on the normal, on all that stuff that it can pretty easily do in Unreal. But it gives some other possibilities, like creating an array of objects and randomizing the object's position on a plane. And if you check my tutorial on uh, Keyshot Replicators, oh, you'll, you'll know how to do that. I do sell these rocks on Gumroad, so if you want to do some experiments yourself, use it in a project, with the link in the description. And yes, I've done a whole bunch of tutorials, well, not a whole bunch, three tutorials on how I've created this rock scene. If you don't want to buy anything, but you're keen to learn, just check my channel. And here we have the like final renders. So we can see the ground. Well, essentially this whole scene is quite stylized. It's um, not that what real, but I mean, it's pretty good. Especially the ground was just stuff that I quickly sculpted in 3D code, dropped in, in here, replicated 50 times, well, not 50 times, but about 300 times, and got the ground. And if you go in a different direction, you know, another shot from here. So I would set my cameras all around and start making different shots, like this one, different ground, different lighting, with different HDR maps. So this uh, about one hour of rendering. You can also see here a shader uh, close up on the shader. So a bit of a noise there, so it kind of helps to sell it on the close up. And yeah, that's really the thing about the 2 billion <laughs> polygon scene is you can fit to key shoot anything and still have a creative freedom highly recommend this software thank you for checking out this video and yeah thank you for coming